Welcome to Midwest Sportsnet. I'm Joey McWilliams, and I am privileged today to be joined on the summit by Ronnie Russell, who is the head women's basketball coach at Missouri Southern. Coach, the Lions are doing well right now. 12-5 and five overall, 9-3 and three in the MIAA, which I'm sure those, those are good numbers to hear, especially that conference record in a tough league like the MIAA. I want to start off, though, talking about your last two contests, both road contests, both against top 15 teams, and both win. So congratulations on that. You, you headed out to Hayes, Kansas, and took on the number two Fort Hayes State Tigers, a 54-41 to 41 win. Coach, I, I know defense has been a big part of your wins lately, but to hold the Tigers to 41 points, no players for Fort Hayes State scored in double figures, that is a huge statement in and of itself, and Lacey Stokes had 21 points for you. So I've set the table. Let me let you talk about that game. Well, Joey, I appreciate you having me on. And you're right; it was uh, it was a huge win for us. Uh, our kids played extremely well defensively, and, and the big thing for us, our team defense. We really have been preaching that as far as making sure we're helping and recovering on the defense. And Fort Hayes is a is a big time program in the aspect of scoring the basketball. They're almost averaging 80 points a game, and for us to go up there and uh, take them out of some of the things they like to do, and they miss some shots, but uh, that's part of basketball as well. And uh, we did enough offensively uh, to win the basketball game. And, of course, Lacey was huge for us uh, throughout the whole game. Uh, we had other kids step up. Uh, you know, Maya Johns was, was solid for us. Um, you know, defensively, Maddie Stokes in the post. Uh, we held their, their big kid to 111 shooting uh, in the post. And, and like I said, when uh, you keep a Fort Hayes team to just 41 <laughs> points, you've accomplished something, especially on the road. Uh, had a great crowd, and they have a great atmosphere at Fort Hayes. I think there's almost 2,000 people there for the game. Uh, so it was a, a big-time win for our program, uh, and it was a big boost to confidence for our kids to understand that we can compete and we can play with the best teams in our league and the best teams in the country. You know, that's I, I would say it's a statement win, really. I mean, it's one of those things that uh, definitely you, you'll look back on. And, and I, I, when I'm reading through scores, I have to tell you, I had to check that one twice to see 41 points because that that was that's a big deal. Yeah. Uh, but in looking at what the team has done defensively in in this part, this mid part of the schedule, you guys really have done well. Well, you go to Carney after that yeah. and come away with another win there, 57-54, three point victory there. And in looking at the numbers, of course, Maddie Stokes with a big night, 15 points, eight boards. But all of the numbers, and you might imagine this in a game like this, a three-point game, numbers are very similar. Assist even, rebounding even, shooting percentage, I mean, just right on, almost exactly the same. The only number where there was a difference was turnovers. You forced the Lopers into 14 turnovers. You gave the ball up only six times, and that was, to me, really, it, it looks like on paper, there's the difference. Yeah, I, I agree with you, and and we've done a really good job. So going back to the Hayes game, in our first – 10 minutes, we had nine turnovers. Uh, and then we ended up with uh, 14 for the game. Uh, and then, of course, with against Carney, we only had six. So we've done a great job of taking care of the ball last half of against Fort Hayes and then the full game against Carney, and that was a big difference. And I think another big difference is um, in the first half alone, uh, we had seven offensive rebounds. We had 14 points of our seven offensive rebounds, which I think was a big step to help us keep the lead at 24-20 in the first half. Of course, it was, you know, we was lighting it up on both, in, you know, both teams were lighting it up. Uh, but, yeah, defensively, we did a great job. We took care of the basketball, and we created some turnovers. And, of course, Lacey right there, I think she had five steals uh, in the in that game. So, you know, she's been a, such a blessing for us as far as what she's coming in and be able to do as a point guard. Um, and another thing is she had, Maddie was huge in that game in the second half. Amaya uh, Johns was huge in the first half. Uh, and then Lacey, and this just tells about her personality. She was 0 for 12, um, until the last two and a half minutes. And she still wasn't afraid. She ended up making two shots late and making a free throw, giving us a 5-0 run in the last two and a half minutes to, to help us get that win. So, you know, it's just been a pleasant, uh, as far as how our kids have competed and, and their, their belief in themselves and in their teammates. And it's been exciting and been a lot of fun so far. Well, let's go ahead and let's, let's stay there then. Talk about Lacey for just a moment. She's having a great year for you all coming in. She scored double figures in almost every game. And the only one that she didn't score double figures in, you all had, uh, you, you were taking care of Lincoln and, and I'm sure she didn't see as much time. It was a team effort there. I thought her stat line was very interesting. Six points. Six rebounds, six assists, 
six steals. So it was a complete stat line, even if she didn't score in double, dig- double digits. But uh, the win over UCO, 33 points, eight rebounds, five assists in that game. She's really having an impact now for you all. Yeah, she's been a huge impact on both ends of the floor. Uh, you know, she has the ability to score, uh, get into the basket. Uh, she sees the floor extremely well. She defends, uh, of course, with the steals. And and for us, our defense starts out front with her, how well she gets after the basketball and puts pressure on the basketball. Uh, and our kids, are, are her teammates are feeding off that. Uh, so that's been a lot of fun. And, and the numbers, like you said, are just – for a freshman coming in and then continue to play this way all throughout the league. You know, she's averaging 17 points, just under six rebounds, just under six assists and over three steals a game. Uh, there's not too many kids in the country are putting up that type of stat line across the board, you know? Uh, but yeah, she's been a lot of fun. Uh, you know, it's one of those that um, we run a lot of different things for her to get downhill and cause she sees the floor so well, plus she can score the basketball in a variety of ways. Uh, so she's been a lot of fun to coach and, and she's just got a tremendous work ethic and a different mindset, you know, cause she's in a gym constantly with coach Porter, one of our assistants, uh, just working on different things and different finishes around the basket. And of course, working on a three point shot. Uh, but she's just got a different mindset and uh, we're just lucky to have her. We're speaking now with Ronnie Russell, the women's basketball coach for the Missouri Southern Lions here on the summit. And I do encourage you, please consider subscribing to the channel to Midwest Sports Net. We enjoy talking about small college sports and more throughout the Midwest and beyond. And we're talking MIAA basketball right now. And coach, uh, you know, we talk about one player named Stokes. I don't know if that was a part of your recruiting after you, <laughs> you did so well in getting Maddie and yeah. you went after another one. Let's talk about Maddie now. And I had a chance to visit with her last season. Really enjoyed that visit. And she was coming off a 30-20 night. She had 31 points, 21 boards against Rogers State. And she's doing well for you again this year, averaging 11.8 points per game, around seven rebounds a game too. So kind of a, a pretty good one-two punch. Yeah. And, you know, the thing for her, you know, she missed our first two games of the year. Uh, had a little tweak in the knee and, and was recovering from that. Uh, and then, of course, uh, started getting into a little bit better shape and better shape right before Christmas was playing pretty well. Of course, took the break and, and big kids seem to get out of shape a little quicker than the little ones. So, uh, but she's the last three or four games has really come on and is getting a lot of confidence scoring the basketball around the bat, uh, around the paint. And we're looking for a lot more because she has been pretty dominant down there uh, on both ends of the floor. I mean, offensively, she's shooting almost 60% or actually over 60%. Uh, and then like you talked about the rebounding seven a game, you know, she's getting two blocks a game. Uh, so defensively, she's doing a great job, uh, as well. And, uh, both the Hayes Carney game, she came up huge with big blocks down the stretch, uh, against the, both those teams, big kids. So, uh, she's, like I said, she's just starting to hit her stride right now, uh, as far as with her condition, getting in better shape and playing and, uh, playing with a lot of confidence right now. So we're excited about that one too. And you got to, uh, a point guard and a big that can do a, a variety of different things. Uh, you got a chance to be really successful. Let me ask you about that, Coach. Uh, I know you're in your sixth season now in Joplin, and and the the team in, in the last few years has been right around 500, maybe mm-hmm. a little little below. Yeah. Uh, but this year, really coming along, and I know those two players are are a part of it. But do you look and see is there any other factor that you look at to go? Well, we really seem to have. Uh, made the connection now, and and we're on the same page. What 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 do you look at as as one of the factors, or maybe more than one? Well, I think you, you mentioned one we've, the connection we've had uh, with the kids, and and as far as the buy in, uh, not to say our previous teams didn't have buy in, but just in previous years, like our UCO game, uh, our Nebraska Carney game, we'd have a tendency to play with people, and then the last three minutes something would happen, and we end up losing a ball game. Uh, where this year we get in those tight ball games, we're finding ways to win, and that's uh, bringing with a lot of confidence in our kid. And I think a big part of that is a part with Lacey coming in as a point guard, uh, that she can do so many different things on both ends of the floor makes a huge difference. But, you know, with our returning kids, and because the majority of our kids are uh, from the last year, and they're playing much better. They've improved as players, which helped us improve as a team. Uh and again, the work ethic of our kids has been tremendous. And it, and, it, and it starts with our assistant coaches, Coach Porter and Coach Fritz, doing a great job of getting the kids up on the floor and doing some individual work constantly and uh, 
preseason. Then we've we've continued that with our uh, throughout the year, shooting a couple times a week uh, with the coach and working on different aspects uh, of their game within what type of shots they get in the game uh, instead of just having them kids go up and just you know fire up uh, a bunch of three point shots off the gun. We're working on different aspects of the shots they're getting in game. Uh, and like I said, Coach Porter and Coach Fritz are doing a great job with that uh, with each one of our kids. Coach, the, the season now starting to wind down. You're going to make your second trip through the MIAA. And, of course, now that the, the thing about that is you've already shown you can win. Now you get a chance to do it again. Yeah. Ten more games, five on the road, five at home, and the conference tournament coming up after that. So uh, looking ahead, Wednesday, you host Roger State. Saturday, you host Northeastern State. And a couple of those games were, you know, relatively close in proximity. So what? talk about your schedule right now and, and the upcoming couple of games. I think, you know, with the next couple of games here, uh, both Roger State and Northeastern State are playing playing pretty well. Uh, Roger State's won three out of their last four games. Um, you know, they've had some adversity with some COVID and some injuries, and uh, but they're, they're, they play extremely hard uh, on both ends of the floor. And Northeastern State's the same way. Uh, they're going to get after you defensively. Uh, they're not overly big as far as around the post, but they know how to score. Uh, motion offense, and you, which means you got to run around, almost feel like you run around with your head cut off trying to play defense against Northeastern State uh, because they set so many screens and there's no set thing for them. But, you know, we're excited about it, especially being at home uh, this week. And, then of course, uh, um, the back half of that is those other five games. We go on the road a little bit as well. Um, you know, we got some tough road games going to Central Missouri, go to Central Oklahoma, uh, playing those teams like that are, that are playing extremely well, going to Pitt State. Uh, so those are big, big games for us as well that we just got to have the right, keep the right mindset, playing one game at a time, make sure we take care of business with each one because we have we've gone through them once uh, and played played well in every game. You know, we lost to Central Missouri at home. We get to go on the road up there. Uh, they're in the top half of the league as well. So we got some games that we can, you know, the conference standings can change really quick. Uh, you know, in a, in a single week, you can go from being in second, third place to fifth or sixth because our conference is so tight right now um, throughout all the way up down to about eight or nine in, in our league. So it's going to be interesting how this finishes out over the next five weeks. Well, coach, and by the way, yeah, I, the, the Pitt state, I thought that was interesting. You know, it's a home and away back to back games so that you guys should get to know each other really well over the course of that four or five yeah. days. But it, it, the, the girls they could have, should show up with confidence uh, because they, it, it, they've done it now. And, and it's one of the, that's, one of those things that the only way you get that experience is, is to, to earn it. Yeah, no, I agree with you. And our kids are playing with a lot of confidence right now. Uh, and I feel confident and it doesn't matter who I put on the floor that we're going to get some positive results from, because we've had a variety of kids besides Lacey and Maddie, we, you know, we talked about Amaya Johns as, as, you know, scoring the basketball for us. Uh, but we've got other Brooks Stauffer who started every game for us, uh, a grad senior here that, you know, she plays 25, 26 minutes games, averages three points. But the reason she plays is because of her defense. She plays so hard on the defensive end, disrupts things on the defensive end. Uh, and we usually put their, her against the best wing scorer, and she does a great job uh, of understanding how to guard people, And uh, which she's improved each year she's been here. Lane Skiles, you know, is another kid that's just solid. Uh, she's a kid that can stretch the defense because she shoots the ball so well from the three-point line. Uh, but she's gotten, she's improved herself as far as getting around the basket and scoring. And she's come up with some big games. Actually, last time we played Roger State, she had, uh, I think she scored 16 points and missed maybe two shots the whole game. So she's played well. And then Caitlin Honeycutt is, a, is another kid that stretches the defense. She's shooting 40% from the three, uh, which opens things up for our big kids, for Maddie inside. Um, but we've got kids coming off the bench as well. Those, I just talked about those are, are three other starters. Uh, but, you know, Kids like Cameron Call, Haley Grant, uh, Claremore, Oklahoma kid that's really starting to play well uh, on both ends of the floor. Uh, she had a big game two weeks ago. Uh, she had 13 rebounds, 13 defensive rebounds that she just went and got. Uh, so we're really pleased with those kids' effort as well. Uh, that makes it exciting that, you know, you can, as a coach, it, it gives me a lot of comfort that I can bring kids off the bench if somebody's struggling a little bit, that we're going to get an energy boost from our bench, which has been huge for us this year. 
Well, there's a lot more basketball to be played for Missouri Southern this season, and I have no doubt that obviously heading into the MIAA tournament and maybe an opportunity to go beyond that as, as to how the postseason fares. Coach Ronnie Russell, thank you so much for taking time with us today here on the Summit. Success to you all, success to the Lions this season, and uh, we appreciate you being here with us today. Well, Joey, I appreciate you having me on. I'm just excited, and, and just go Lions. It's what we want to be.